Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. We're going to take just a couple of moments in the Word this morning. Go, go to Second Chronicles. In the Old Testament, Second Chronicles, and look at chapter thirty-three. You, uh, if you're reading with us through the Old Testament, you read this a few weeks ago, and it struck me. And for weeks, it's just tumbled over in my soul because this is this is such an incredible revelation of God for his people, for people in general, but compressed into just a few verses, uh, really a chapter. And this is the story of King Manasseh and who and what he was. And um, this is what we read, except we didn't bring our glasses up here, so we're not reading. Hey, Sister Elizabeth, will you bring me my jacket, please? Uh, uh, gang, I'm sorry. Uh, the hardest day for me, thank you, ma'am. The hardest day for me is baby dedications. I was in my office, sick, anxious. <laughs> you know how easy it is to mess up, to say something wrong, do something wrong, and to have, I mean, it's just, oh, the anxiety. I would rather face 30,000 people in, in a crusade than to face three or four or six babies. <laughs> it's just so... Uh, and then uh, praying with Miss Sonia, Sister Sonia, I, wouldn't, uh, I, I wanted somebody else to pray. I know Sister Pam and I are up here, and I say this all the time, but I, I didn't. Sometimes I still wonder are we out of this anxiety season? I went to grab something yesterday at a restaurant, and I thought, oh, and I'm vaccinated. And I was like, can I touch this? Is it clean? I, it doesn't look like it's clean. It's been on this table. Other people have been here. I might get sick. I don't know what to do. And that just won't go away. Is anybody else? Got that at times? I, I was watching the news, not watching the news, but I saw some articles the other day on Friday, I think it was, and there were people that were really kind of um, poking. There were some nurses that, uh, somewhere, I don't even remember where, I don't know what it was about, but they didn't, they didn't feel comfortable. They, they had discomfort and did not want to receive the vaccine. And somehow that's now a big political issue. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. If you have anxiety about the virus and concern so you get the vaccine how is your anxiety and concern better than her anxiety or concern because there have been not a few who have had blood clots and complications from some have you seen that yeah so listen here at central we support you i've told you this from day one we support you wherever you feel you know your body. I don't know your body. You, with your doctor, figure out what you're doing, and we support you. We're not taking sides in this stupid stuff. We're not taking uh, political sides. We're not taking cultural sides. If Facebook fell off the planet tomorrow, our planet would be a better place. Good morning to those of you joining us on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Elizabeth, for bringing my glasses. I began to read the wrong verse. <laughs> I want verse 10 of 2 Chronicles 33, but the Lord, excuse me, the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they ignored all his warnings. And this is, in my opinion, an incredible statement that God warned them again and again. So I want to ask you today, what to do with the warnings. How does the Lord speak? How does he warn a people? Is he warning 
people now? Is he warning this nation or the nations? Is he warning church, this church or churches? It's very difficult for us to be able to clearly discern how God is warning, what he's saying, how he's saying it. What we do know about Manasseh and the kingdom at that time is that he rejected. Now, this is not the northern kingdom. This is the southern kingdom of Judah, which had quite a number of godly kings, but he was not one of them. And it didn't take long for him, having been raised by a godly king, to turn. And yet he served as king for 55 years. I'm going to tell you something about leadership. People get tired of it after a while. I don't mean the leader. I mean people get tired of your leadership. That's why in America we limit, it, we limit presidents to about eight years. I don't care how great you are, people are going to at some point say, nah, we're ready for somebody else. Yeah. Do you see what just happened in Israel this week? Politicians who can't stand each other, who don't have anything in common ideologically at all, all united and said to Mr. Netanyahu, thanks for the last 15 years, but we're really done with you. So this happens, and yet somehow Manasseh was able to avoid all of that, possibly because there was always some new evil being introduced every day that kept people's fascination and attention. The scope of the evil was breathtaking. He killed people for sport. They, they had people being executed in the city of Jerusalem on almost a daily basis, history says. They believe church history and Jewish history traditionally says that it was this king that had Isaiah sawn in half. Isaiah said, God is warning you, and the king said, I'm warning you for the last time. Get him out of here. It is, it is described in the book of both 2 Kings and here in 2 Chronicles that his wickedness, what he led the people into, what he conceived in his little brain and then led the people into was worse than the people who lived there before the Jewish people arrived. Wow. And you know the story, right, from the Old Testament and how God took all those people out because of how wicked they had become. And now this guy, one of God's own guys, has led his people into even bad. Ooh, I didn't, did I do that? Well, it's a bad microphone then. I didn't say. <laughs> how many of you get frustrated with technology? Okay, look at verse 11. So the Lord sent, uh-oh, so the Lord sent the commanders of the Assyrian armies and they took Manasseh prisoner. They put a ring through his nose, bound him in bronze chains, and led him away to Babylon. Number one, after the warnings, demons will be on display. Now this is really where we are in America. And you can say, well, I don't believe in demons, that doesn't matter. You can say they don't exist, that doesn't matter either. You can say, I ignore them, I don't believe in an enlightened nation like America in the West where we understand science and all that, there's no such thing as demons. That, whatever you think is up to you. But I'm going to tell you what the truth is. The truth is, when you go to this place, demons are going to be on display. Now, I know it doesn't say anything about demons here, but the physicality of this is symbolic of the spirituality. When they come, this is what they do. Now, the King James uses a different phrase here. It says he got him out of the thorn bushes or something, but it was a figure of speech. And so the, the translation here of the New Living is accurate. They pierced him, they bound him, and they led him away. And when you cross certain boundaries... When you go over those lines, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Doesn't matter what your thing is, doesn't matter what it is you're, you're engaging in, somebody talked to you to start participating in, doesn't matter how wonderful you think it is, how much you believe that it's the greatest thing ever. When you cross some boundaries, when you cross some lines, and the conviction of your own conscience has been subdued by you, now you're in a different world. And the thing of darkness that's coming your way is going to pierce you, bind you, and lead you away. And when I walk sometimes in the morning, I see people who are pierced, bound. And I'm not talking about earrings and nose rings. I'm using all of that to help you understand what's going on spiritually. 
spiritually, there's a reality. Isn't it interesting that whenever we see Jesus, one of the first miracles that he does in each of the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is cast out demons? No explanation, because we don't need an explanation. No roadmap as to where they came from, who they are, what they do, or anything. We know what they do. Jesus just simply began to engage them. There wasn't one that he wasn't Lord over. There wasn't one that he wasn't able to bring down, cast out, deal with. There was never one that he wasn't able to take care of. That's the king that we serve. That's the Lord that we walk with. The physical enemy represents, in this context, spiritual ones. They pierced him, bound him, led him away, and today nothing has changed. People are being led away. Constantly, I saw an interesting thing. I was telling Sister Pam on uh, on a social media site, and it, it said, "This is what's wrong with our country." And it wasn't talking about the nature of these things. It was talking about how long they're celebrated. There was a soldier with his hand on a helmet, gun stuck in the ground, symbolic of a fallen comrade. Right? Memorial Day. One day. For those who have given their life to make sure that we can drive through Chick-fil-A seven times on any given day but Sunday. For those who have given their life to make sure that we can have anything we want at the mall or on Amazon one day. And yet we're in, then they had another picture, I can't describe it to you, another picture of a month of celebrating people's sexual orientation. Listen, I don't think we need a month. If we don't need a month to celebrate those who have served for years on end, paid a significant price, then I don't think we need a month to really celebrate anything. You can have a day. Have a day, right? I saw um, an advertisement for an exclusive resort not far from here in Pennsylvania. It was in the paper the other day, and then I threw it away and couldn't find it. I found other things online, but I couldn't find it exactly. And it said, come and celebrate this coming weekend with us, this big uh, extravaganza. And it's, um, you know, very, very sensitive to our time. And it had three words of description. The last one was decadence. And I looked up the word decadence, and I thought, hmm, the last time I saw that word was right before the flood in New Orleans of Katrina. And they were in that, I forget what it was taking place. But I remember in the newspaper here, the same word was used because they were having this big celebration of decadence. And as a culture and a nation, I worry, and I know many of you do as well, that we might be at the same kind of place. Now you can say, well, pastor, we're not, we're not a theocracy. We're not a nation like Israel. That's, that doesn't apply to us, but it applied to the nations that were there before Israel. And they weren't Jewish. Here's the second thing, verse 12, I'm hurrying. But while in deep distress, hallelujah. Now we saw a couple of things here. The Lord spoke and they didn't listen. So the Lord sent, (laughs) and now in verse 12, that got them to listen. But while in deep distress, Manasseh sought the Lord his God and sincerely humbled himself before the God of his ancestors. Number one, the demons are on display when you and I aren't able to listen to the warnings, heed the warnings, But number two, we can find ourselves in deep distress. Seeking the Lord is always an option. Is it viable to you? Seeking the Lord. Isn't it? This is incredible. After who knows how many decades he has been a reign of terror in the nation of Israel and the kingdom of Judah and in the city of Jerusalem. And after all of these many years, he put things in the temple that were profane. He caused blood to flow in the streets of innocent people. He was a trib- every kind of imaginable evil. He manufactured new evil things. And all of that, and then it says, not that he sought the Lord, he sought sought his Lord. He remembered in his distress. He remembered somebody's here today. You're watching me. You are in distress. I'm going to tell you something. Seeking the Lord is always an option when you're in distress. Amen. You and I have the privilege of calling out on God no matter what nation you're in, no matter what your government believes, no matter what your school teaches you. You, when you are in distress, you can call on the Lord. Hallelujah. 
This is the kind of God we serve. He's not waiting to destroy us. He's not waiting to be angry with us. He's waiting to meet us, to fellowship with us, to restore us as he wishes and wants. But pastor, you don't understand. I, I, it's going to be difficult. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. It's difficult anytime you want to make a change in your life. It never gets easier. When you decide you're going to call upon the Lord, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose funds, not F-U-N, F-U-N-D-S. And you're going to lose connection with the familiar. But you're going to find new friends, new funds, and new familiar things. It's easier to be a believer, to get to a point of becoming a believer as a young person than as an older person, and I'm talking about age, not because... You don't have to sacrifice or anything like that, but because you do it when there aren't as many consequences. Right now across this nation, there's a move among homosexual men. There is a deep move of the Holy Spirit, and there's a call coming in the middle of the night while they're asleep, and they're hearing, come back, come back to the king, come back. But they are so bound by the ideology of the pride. They're so ensnared. They are not able to hear that, and yet this is a sovereign call that's going out. It's come from heaven. It's not coming from a preacher. It's not coming from a church or a denomination, there is a work, a cry of the Holy Spirit saying to thousands upon thousands, this is the day of redemption. This is the day of being set free. You can come back. You can be restored. You can have a life that you've imagined. You don't have to live in that lie or any other lie. You don't have to live in adultery and the guilt that comes with it. You don't have to live as a thief. You don't have to live as a heroin addict. This is the moment of God's outpouring of his grace and mercy but when you look at what you're going to lose you've got to turn away from that and look at what you're going to gain you've got to say this God that I'm hearing from is worth everything I'll give up everything I'll let go of everything I'll surrender everything to get that pearl of great price that's what God's doing he's inviting us to come back and he did that with Manasseh and Manasseh heard while in deep distress, he sought the Lord his God and sincerely humbled himself. It's very difficult to sincerely humble yourself when you're celebrating pride. Let me restate that. It's impossible to humble yourself while you're celebrating pride. You can't have both. You cannot. I don't care who you are. I don't care how they dress it up. They've, they've sold us. Wow, look at this bill of goods. Well, as long as we honor the fallen we honor nurses and doctors for a minute or two, as long as we honor this, that, and the other. Let's take a whole month and, and honor pride. <laughs> every day, let's come on, let's celebrate. And then maybe it'll be three months. And then, why not 12 months? Why not every day? Because that's what's being said. If you don't follow this, you don't deserve to live. And so the king humbles himself. While he was in distress. And look at verse 13. I'm closing with this. And when he prayed, the Lord listened to him and was moved by his request. Oh, I want to read that again. And I want you to hear these words. And when he prayed, the Lord listened to him and was moved by his request. So the Lord brought Manasseh back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Now you think about that. He's a prisoner of war. He's been led away in chains. He's been pierced and, and bound. And yet when he cries out in his humility, in his brokenness, when he cries out to God, the Bible says, God said, what is that I hear? What, 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 what is that beautiful sound I hear? This guy has gotten what only a small portion of what he deserves. Come on. Anybody agree with me? Man, this guy hasn't gotten anything like he really deserved. 40 or 50 years of doing the most intense garbage you can imagine. Creating, listen, when you talk about all of the things that he set up, the idols, the Asherah poles, and it's easy for us to say that stuff, but listen, it was wicked. The wickedness that went with it dwarfs anything that we face today. This was pride times a thousand in God's temple. And yet the guy who orchestrated all of that in chains in Babylon says to God, 
I've made a mess of everything. I'm so sorry. I call on the God of my father, and I ask you to forgive me. Oh, and somebody in heaven ripped the clouds apart. And the glory of God began to pour down into that prison cell. And God said, that's, that's the statement I've been waiting for. You've spent billions on sin. You've spent a lifetime trying to build into your mind that everything you did was okay. You spent every waking moment thinking about new ways to lead my people into sin and even some of your sleeping moments. But in this moment, I hear the cry of your heart and God began to pour out upon him the goodness of God. The Bible says, so the Lord brought Manasseh back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh finally realized that the Lord alone is God. Number three, there is a deliverance from destruction. It doesn't have to be the way that the devil planned it for your life and my life. It does not have to be that way. Glory to God. God has a different plan for your life and my life. Satan can write what he wants. He can put all over his marker board. This is what I'm determined for her or for him. But God says, oh no, that's not my plan for them. My plan is a plan of deliverance. Jesus Christ came. He came with deliverance. Amen. Praise God. When the king of glory is available to you, take advantage of it. When you cry out to him and he opens the heavens and steps into your presence, grab hold of him and say, oh God, I need you. When the sea billows roll and, and in the midst of all of these sorrows, I need you. And God says, not only do I hear you, not only do I want to help you, but I want to come to you with deliverance because I want every chain to be broken. I want every piercing healed. And again, I'm not talking about ears, nose, eyebrows, or anything else you got pierced. But I'm telling you, when Satan comes, he'll pierce your soul. It's no coincidence that to get those drugs into your veins, you have to pierce your body, that that needle has to plunge in below the skin. That needle's digging and looking for your soul. You can push it between your toes. You can put it in your ear. You can dig that thing as deep as you want to, but you'll not find your soul. No matter how bound you are, no matter how addicted, how strung out, how hopeless, no matter how many you've robbed from, stolen from, no matter how many bridges you burnt, no matter how many of your family have had to walk away rather than lose everything they've got, no matter how many people had to forsake you for their own sanity, God is still waiting for you to come to the end of that garbage and to say, my God, where is your plan for my life? I'm so sorry for following the devil's plan. I want your plan for my life. I followed Satan. I've danced with the devil. I've welcomed demons from head to toe but I need the king of glory to come and heal me and restore my soul some of you here today it's not heroin but there's something entangling you and keeping you from a fullness in God I was feeling things while we were worshiping and so many of you were struggling to even enter into that song and listen you struggle because you don't feel worthy. You struggle because you're not consistent with the message of the songs. The message of the songs is he's worthy. I, I can't be worthy to praise him. I, there's just not anything good in me. But the Holy Spirit comes up wells up within me. The Holy Spirit worships him through me. The Holy Spirit begins to not only fill me, but sanctify me, to sanctify me. Listen, you can listen to this world. You can listen to a lot of churches, but I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is holy. He can't be unholy. There's no part of him. There's not a finger. There's not a, an eyelash of him that can be unholy or unclean. So when you and I try to come into his presence, we've got to get to that place, but it's impossible except the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit who makes, us pos makes it possible and us capable of coming in to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've been bound and led away, the king is here today to bring you back. But in his prison cell, he called on the Lord. But in his distress, 
he called on the Lord. But in his darkness, but in his defeat, but in his addiction, but in his sorrow, but in his anger, but in his rage against God, but in his misery, but in his selfishness, but in his pride, he called upon the Lord. I've never known anybody to have heroin listen to them when they were calling out in their misery. They're put in jail. Heroin doesn't even care. Doesn't even come to visit them. Does it, Chaplain Paul? Heroin never, never comes to visit. Oh, once in a while somebody will try and sneak something in. The dealer doesn't come to visit. The friends don't come to visit. But Jesus will. Bow your heads with me this morning, please. Father, thank you so much for your house. Thank you for the privilege of coming in here today and dedicating children, little ones, to the King of glory. They, they're going to grow up in a very difficult place unless we have a move of Manasseh's spirit. I'm not talking about something that he is spiritually or divine. I just mean what he did. God, unless we move like he moved, unless we break like he broke and surrender like he did, we are never going to see a bright day. As a nation, we're going to struggle. We're going to continue to build things and they're going to fall apart. We're going to continue to try and stop up the leaks here and there only to see the water breaking forth. God, help us in our nation. Help us as believers right here at Central. Let the crying out begin with us, Lord. Let the crying out, the decision to give all, to go all in, start right here with us. Let it start with us. We thank you for it today. Oh, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me, church, all over the place today? Let's stand in the house before we scoot out of here. Some of you are headed out on vacation over the next couple of weeks. As strange as that's going to be, hallelujah, right? Some of you are going to visit family. This one or that one's getting married or has had a baby or whatever it might be. And I just want to encourage you in those situations, you're going to face so many things. You and I know it. You're just going to face things that you say, oh, how do I handle this? Some of you are going to go and be with family and there's all kinds of people there that don't agree with you theologically, politically. And how do, you, how do you maintain being a lover of God and being somebody who can tolerate the things around us? I want to encourage you that you're allowed to love people. There, there's no law against that. You can just love people. Even if they live in a way that you, you don't positionally agree with. Love them. Love them. They're going to face the same God that Manasseh faced and the same God that you and I face. Just, just love them. Let them choose whatever they want to choose, but I'm going to tell you something. The choice to call out on God is always there. Amen. If you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, I want to give you that opportunity today. And if you need special prayer, I want to pray with you as well before we close out today. Father, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit, his, his greatest work, it seems, from the Word of God, and I think all of us would agree, his greatest work is to redeem us, to bring us to the Savior, to con convict us, and invite us to salvation. I'm praying for my brothers and sisters here today, Lord, for men and women who may not yet have surrendered to you fully, and I pray that somebody in this house today who has not fully surrendered, or somebody watching They've not yet made Jesus Christ Lord because they feel that they're going to lose a position at work. They're afraid they're going to lose friends. They're afraid they'll be misunderstood, rejected, and made fun of. They're afraid of the cost, the price. They're afraid of all of those things. Lord, would you give them courage? I pray that you would give them courage today to say, no matter what the price in this life, he's worth it. If you've never received him, why don't you do that right now? Right where you are. Say to the King of glory, Jesus, save me. Save me. If you have a special need in your life for healing, you have a need for a prayer partnership today, you want somebody to pray for you, we're going to pray for you in these next two or three minutes. All you have to do is step out 
into this altar and we'll pray for you. And as I pray, if you step out today, we're going to believe that same power that touched Manasseh is going to touch us. If you have a special need for anything, finances, a decision, you need encouragement, whatever it is you're going through, just step out into this altar for one minute today and we're going to pray. We're going to lay hands on you and pray for you. Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ the Lord, as we pray today, God, as we pray for miracles and signs and wonders, as we pray for breakthrough and healing, as we pray for deliverance and encouragement, God, we give our lives to you completely, completely. Lord, we say thank you today. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Pam's going to lead us in some worship for a minute. Come on, if you need special prayer, step into this altar. And let's believe together.